Now the first procedure we'll want to do on the rib cage is to remove the back strap from the animal. Now a lot of times people call this the tenderloin, people call this the chop. What it actually is, is a boneless New York strip steak. Now the safest way to do this is we're going to start right here along the back and we're going to cut a straight line right down along the backbone. Now you can do this when the animal's hanging up as we did earlier, or you can remove it once it's laying flat on the table. I like to remove it when it's laying flat on the table because the rib cage holds still, I can hold it still, and I can work on the animal here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start down, we're going to be removing this upper side first, so we're going to start on this upper side of the backbone, and we're just going to insert our knife here, right on the upper side of the backbone, and we're going to stay right tight to that backbone, and we're going to follow this the whole way out. We're going to follow it the whole way out, staying right tight against the backbone, using the same procedure that we used earlier when we were following the leg bones out through, staying right against it, don't saw 90 degrees down against it, that way you'll dull your knife, but stay right down against it, follow it right out, okay, we're going to follow it the whole way up, right up to the base of the neck. Now, what we'll do here is we'll start down, start down low into the rib area of the animal. Don't try to start up here where the actual strip loin starts or the tender loin, I guess we'll call it. Don't start up there because what you do there is you run a danger of starting right into the tender loin and losing some of that very valuable meat. This is some of the most tender meat that's in the animal. So what I like to do is I like to start down low on the rib cage area of the animal, down in here. Okay, this way I'm certain that I'm not getting into that valuable tender loin meat. And I'll start down here. And I'm just going to start skinning this back, similar to the skinning procedure that we did when we skinned the animal. I'm just going to follow this right back around. Okay, now those ribs are going to follow right down in. Follow right down in where they're going to connect onto the spine. So what we want to do is we just want to follow that curve right down in there. And as we follow those ribs, stay right tight to the ribs. That same deboning procedure that we've been following all along, where we stay right tight to the bone, it's very important, you just want to follow those ribs right down in until we hit that spine. Follow them right down in, just working your way the entire length of that rib cage, the whole way back. We're just going to keep following that right back along here. Take your time, stay real tight to those ribs. Now back here towards the back part of the animal, you're going to run out of ribs. So that's, there's a small line of pin bones right in here that I can feel with my thumb. We want to follow those pin bones. Okay, once you hit those pin bones, they're right here. We want to stay right tight against those pin bones. You'll notice there'll be ribs from here the whole way up to the neck area. But once you get back to the back, this very back six inches here, you're going to find that those ribs end. This is where your flank begins, and the ribs end. So you've got to feel for those pin bones. Those pin bones will be right here. Follow that right down on, stay right next to those pin bones, and follow that right back until you hit that spinal column right there. Follow right back. Said you're just following those ribs right down around. Okay, keep following it. Keep following. See that? See all those ribs right there. I'm just following those ribs as they curve and go right up and then attach to the spine. I'm just following them. Coming right along there. And as I said, back here where the flank starts, you've got to feel for these pin bones because these ribs don't extend the whole way up. So just keep working your way right back along there until you hit that spine. And you'll feel it back there. Follow your way right along there, then right here at the back, we can cut this loose. Once we cut this loose, we can just start pulling up on it, and pull and cut, pull and cut, and pull that nice tenderloin right out of there. Now, if you're not sure how far to go up into the neck, just go ahead and follow it way up into the neck, because you're probably not going to use this neck for anything unless you want to use it for a roast. The neck will work well for a roast, but there's a lot of good hamburger meat in here. This is where we're going to get our venison sticks from, our venison bologna, our venison sausages, our burgers, our meatloaves, our meatballs. A lot of great meat in that neck. Okay, so we're going to follow that right up into that neck area, and then we're going to cut that right off. And there's our tenderloin. Beautiful venison tenderloin. We're going to lay that there, then we're going to flip it over, and we're going to go right to work on the one on the other side. We're going to follow the same procedure on the other side going to do here, exact same thing. We're going to follow and we're going to cut a line on the opposite side of the spine now, similar to what we did on the blade bone in the shoulder. Remember there's two sides to it. We cut down the left side, cut down the right side. This is the same thing, except on the shoulder plate on one side, 
we had the mock tender, and on the other side, we had top blade. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to head right down along the spine again, staying real tight and close to it. We don't want to dig into that tenderloin. Follow it right up into the neck, just like we did before. Follow it the whole way down. Get your hand in there. Feel your way down through there. Follow it the whole way down. Then once again, we're going to follow the same procedure. Just follow those ribs right down around. Start far back, that way you're in no danger of getting into that. Because what you're going to do is if you start in there and you're trying to guess where those ribs curve down over, you're going to start right into the middle of that tenderloin and you're going to lose a lot of great tenderloin meat there. So start up high on the ribs, follow those ribs right down along here, skinning that right down, following those ribs right up into the neck here. We'll just follow those ribs right down, follow them right down to the spine. Once again, back here in the flank area, you can remove that flank meat if it's bothering you, but follow that right down along here until you can feel them pin bones. You will feel those pin bones. Follow right down along those pin bones. Just keep working your way down along here, right down to that spinal column. Follow those ribs right down around. They're going to be a nice gradual curve, then they're going to drop off right into that tenderloin. We want to stay really close to those bones. Follow right to the back just like so. And just keep working your way down here. We're going to get down into those pin bones down here that we talked about in the flank area where they're not full ribs, they're just short pin bones. We're going to follow them right along. Be very careful. It's easy back there when you don't have those ribs to follow. It's easy to bite into that tenderloin. You want to make sure you stay really tight. You can see here where we stay really tight to those pin bones. And then we're going to do the same thing. Just going to cut it off back there, okay? We're just going to follow it right up through. Just using our knife just a little bit to help us along because sometimes this tenderloin can be so tender that it'll tear as you're trying to remove it. So we'll bring it right up into the neck again so that we're sure we got the whole thing and then we'll cut it off. And there's our other big beautiful tenderloin. Beautiful piece of meat tender. Lay that out. We'll set our rib cage off to the side and we'll go to work on these tenderloins. To remove this skin off the back of the tenderloin, we don't even use, need to use our knife. We just get in there with our hands and just pull this and we can strip this right off of there. Just give it a good hard pull. Be careful that it doesn't start to tear some of your tenderloin feet. Once again, as I said before, that tenderloin can be so tender sometimes it will literally tear apart. So we'll pull that, bring that off there. Now with this piece of meat here, we'll follow the same procedures that we have all along. Trim off all the gristle, sinew, fat, and connective tissue, and then you can use this meat for whatever you want. You can use it for stir fry, tender tips, stewing meat, canned beef, whatever you want to can of meat, can of venison. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for here. But just take your time, trim it up, trim that venison fat off there. So remember, we said that that was tart. I'm going to go ahead for time purposes, put this down in the hamburger tub. Okay, and we're going to go on and finish up our tender one here. Now, you're going to notice the same connective tissue, the silver skin, that's on the outside of this loin. Now what we're going to do here is this is where we want to be very, very careful because there's a lot of great meat in here so we don't want to bite into the meat. But what we want to do is just make an incision here and just slide our knife just underneath that silver skin and just take it off very, very gently. Just stay right underneath it definitely don't want to get down into that good meat. Just work your way right out through there. What you're doing is going underneath there and just keep a little bit of upward pressure like this. If you go too steep, you'll cut your way right out through that. But just keep your knife up, tilt it up just a little bit and just work your way right out and then come right back the other direction the same way. As you can see here, my knife is just barely underneath that silver skin. And I'm not trying to take off too much at a time now. I'm just working my way along there and taking that right off. See, we didn't lose any meat. You can set that off to the side and then repeat the same procedure. Just gently slide your knife underneath that silver skin. Once it's through, tilt it up in the air just a little bit. Just tilt it up a little bit and just gently work your way right out towards the end of that tenderloin, just like so. Okay, then insert your knife and then follow it along. You can actually see the knife traveling right underneath that silver skin. I'm going to follow that 
right back along there, okay, just like so. If you get any meat on there, you can go ahead and stop, take a moment, trim it off of there. All right, here we go. Now, we've got a little bit of a loose flap of meat here. This is a very nice piece of meat, so we can take that, we can...